Welcome to the Bio Balance HealthCast, episode number 526. Slow heartbeat is not necessarily a sign of health. Bio Balance Health features conversations about anti aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Bio Balance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. We have done a number of podcasts in the past about a rapid heartbeat and about regulating the rhythm, the electrical energy that runs the heart. The heart is a pump that pumps the blood through your body and maintains a steady amount of pressure in your veins and arteries, uh, or in your veins, and, and then it pumps the replacement blood in that is infused with oxygen that come in through your lungs. And without that working properly, you're going to die. And what we have not focused on is that there are some people who have a slow heartbeat, slower than it should be. And so then the factor that has to be considered is the pulse rate. And Mm -hmm. I don't think in any of the conversations we've done 525 other episodes of our podcast, and we've never talked about pulse rate as a critical factor in maintaining good health. So we thought this week we would pay attention to that concept. Well, this is... This subject is interesting that I've avoided it somehow psychologically because my mother had a heart rate that was about 50. Now, anything under 60... Regularly, she had that. That was her normal heart So she was slow and lethargic. She was really slow. A really slow heartbeat does not give you enough oxygen. Right. Makes you feel really tired. Makes It, it is something that is not good for you because you don't get enough oxygen to your whole body. And it her normal heart rate was about 50. It went down to 40. So, so is that why you carry a little blood ox monitor around with you that you put on people? Like, here, let me see. Yeah, I do, I do when, the, when the subject arises. But I don't, I mean, I'm not putting you it on everyone. You just grab strangers and say, here, no, let me. Yeah. No, but, the, but it's a cool little gadget. Yeah. Um, but it, it, does, it does show you how much oxygen, a pulse ox, since you brought it up. Sorry. Is, uh, we, we weren't going to talk a gadget about. That, you put, that you put on, on your index finger, and you, you set it down. It'll give you your pulse, which is the beats per minute that your heart beats, but it will also give you the concentration of oxygen in your blood. And this is huge for somebody you trained 35 to 40 years ago, Mm -hmm. because we used to have stick a needle in your artery here, which hurts. And it was not easy to do. You'd have to wait for the pulse to bump the needle up with the needle halfway in and then go into it. It was, it was a procedure that no one wanted, and then we'd right. send it off to the lab. Now we've got this little $25 gadget you can put on your finger and see how much oxygen is in your blood. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty darn cool. But, but my mom had really low thyroid, really low thyroid. And in those days, as in today, no one listened to her, and no one gave her enough thyroid. They gave her a teeny tiny little bit, but not enough to bring her pulse up. Not enough to bring her blood pressure up. She had low blood pressure as well. And she had narcolepsy. And I'm not really sure if she had narcolepsy because she had a, a neurologic issue or because she just didn't have enough oxygen. Yeah. I mean, because when you don't have enough oxygen, you get really sleepy. Mm-hmm. So, and so, so nar- narcolepsy means she just falls asleep in the middle of the conversation. She'd be talking to you and she'd go. Was she, she able to even drive a car? No. Because sometimes they don't allow that. No. Yeah, no, because you don't want to fall asleep driving. No, she it got worse as she got older. So when she was younger, she could hyper yeah. make herself hyper just yeah. to go someplace to pick me up. But that's all she did. Yeah, she didn't. She didn't she'd really almost drive. have to get adrenalized to. Have yeah, enough. she'd have to have. She she wasn't. They didn't know much about narcolepsy then, and they didn't know that you have to 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 treat it. You treat it like ADD, and they're they're similar genetics. So you treat it with a stimulant. So that that would have helped her with her heart rate a little bit. But she really needed her thyroid to help with her heart rate. Now, right. there are some people who have a low th- heart rate, below 60, who actually have a heart issue. It's called heart block. So the pulse is generated in the atrium, which is the top part of, the, of the, your heart. The bottom is your ventricles. And the pulse first squeezes the atrium, 
the blood goes into the ventricle, and then the ventricle squeezes, and the blood flows back into the atrium. So it's like a two-beat. Yeah. Just, ba bum, ba yeah. bum, ba bum. So, so you so you get atrial filling, and then you get ventricle filling, and then when the ventricle squeezes, all the blood goes out the aorta to your body, and more more blood flows in that is coming from uh, on the right side of your heart. It's coming from your body. For, on the left side of the heart, it's coming from your lungs. So, so basically, this is that's how your heart works. But if you get a you're supposed to be ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum. I mean, or just a little slower than that. But if you go ba bum ba bum ba bum, that's not, that. There's something wrong with your heart rate, and oftentimes people will need medication to stimulate that heartbeat so that it's faster and can actually get you enough oxygen, or they uh, get their thyroid or whatever else is wrong treated. Some people. It's not from their thyroid. Oftentimes, it's a heart block. There's, um, there are several different names for these heart blocks. Some of them are dangerous. Some of them, your heart gets slower and slower and stops. And that's, that's you know, not the traditional heart attack where your, your heart muscle is without oxygen because the vessels are clogged. This is just, an ele that's a plumbing issue. This is an electrical issue where you just stop beating so, as it gets slower. So when they know that, is, is the treatment for that when you, you go in the hospital and they stop your heart and then re... No, that, when we start, stop the heart is when we have a very fast heart rate. Mm -hmm. And it's so fast that we have to break break that um, progression of the and fast... Restart and restart it. Because the, the flow is not enough. It's yeah, there's not too enough blood. It's get enough volume of so blood. So the opposite of a slow heart rate is a fast heart rate, which... The ventricles and the atria don't have enough blood in them because there's not enough time to fill them up. Right. So, so they fill halfway and squeeze out, and so that makes you feel tired too. Right. So that that gives you less oxygen than you should have, and and your heart working that hard for not much um, oxygen to your tissues makes you tired. So that's the high heart rate. The low heart rate. If you really have a low heart rate, my mother eventually, thank goodness after her heart stopped, got a pacemaker. Wow. But only by the grace of God dead and wait for the ambulance. He just, like, drove her to the hospital, which was not too far. So they didn't consider a pacemaker for her until her heart actually stopped. Yeah, slowed which, down enough which is not quit. the way it should go, by the way. <laughs> you should have your – your doctor should notice this and ask you questions and send you for studies – so and then did, they did compressions in the ambulance just to keep her going? They didn't get an ambulance. My, da my yeah. dad, you know, I don't know what he was doing in the car, but he drove her. Yeah. It wasn't the smartest thing to do because an ambulance probably would have been a much better choice. But he drove her at, I don't know how fast he went. He could have. Yeah. That was dangerous, too. But, he, you know, he got her to the hospital and they restarted her heart and put a pacemaker in. Wow. So... Scary That's stuff. the downside of having a really slow heart rate. Now, most of my patients, if I say, oh, your heart rate's 50, they think that's a good thing because for the one reason is that athletes, to accommodate all of the exercise that they do, their heart is gets a little bigger, holds a little bit more blood, mm -hmm. and pushes harder. So their pump is better than the rest of us. So their heart rate slows. So when they're exercising, they get plenty of oxygen because their pump is just better than mine and everybody else's. So if you're an athlete and your pulse is 60, that's okay. But if you're not an athlete and your pulse is 60 or less, that's not okay because you're not getting enough oxygen. Your pump hasn't been built up over time to, you know, over exercise time so that it can accommodate a slower heart rate. It's just one of those adaptations we do to our lifestyle. Our body adapts to our lifestyle. Yeah, I, I remember, and I don't know if it's an apocryphal story, if it's a true story, but I remember being told that NASA picked Neil Armstrong to land on the moon mm -hmm. because he had been a fighter pilot and a test pilot, and he had been in a lot of life and death situations that were critical for him to stay under control and to think and do things in the right order. Mm -hmm. And his heartbeat didn't accelerate. I mean, they could monitor it. They did monitor it. And it wouldn't get crazy like mine would if I were near. That's a whole different thing. That means that he, that Neil Armstrong <laughs> trained his body his and his mind. brain yeah. and his adrenal glands not to get excited over anything. 
at no matter what happens, he was even. That's the kind of guy you want up in space. That's why they picked him to land on the moon. It's life and death every second that you're off the ground. Yeah. And so you need somebody who doesn't panic. Well, that's that was their outward symptom that showed that he didn't panic. Yeah. Because when you panic and you put out a lot of adrenaline from your adrenal gland, your heart goes faster. Right. So um, if you have a heart block, it doesn't. Huh. It just won't go faster. But he didn't have that problem. He had he had the advantage of over years training, training. himself mm-hmm. and adapting to a situation like being a fighter pilot. I mean, most of us would have a heart attack in the air just because our heart would race so fast that we couldn't get enough oxygen to it because we'd be so scared. But phew, not him. Right. He was even. Well, and that's I, the story I was told. And again, yeah, I don't, but that's your the story's right. Yeah. It's just that it's it indicates something different than just your pulse is slow or your pulse okay. is fast. His pulse was was normal for him, but it never raised or lowered, not because it's sick, but, but because it's really well. Yeah. But but I hear people come in and they say, Oh yeah, my blood pressure is a hundred over fifty and and I have a pulse of 50, and they think that means they're healthy. Well, they're not athletes. And well, that usually means if your pulse and your blood pressure are low, that usually means your thyroid's low. So that's the first thing I look at. Deke Slayton, one of the original Mercury 7 astronauts, was not allowed to go in space because he had a heart arrhythmia that they found. Mm-hmm. And he, mm-hmm. he became the director of astronaut training, mm-hmm. stayed in the program, mm-hmm. and helped get... The mission's accomplished, Mm -hmm. but he couldn't fly. Well, astronauts have to be perfect. Yes. I mean, physically and mentally and emotionally perfect. I mean, that's why there's not that many of them, because they they pick the cream of the crop. Mm -hmm. And then you have to want to go into space, and you have to be daring enough to go into space. I mean, I'd be like, "Mm, I don't think so. So, Thanks, um, but no thanks. I'll have dark chocolate. (laughs) (laughs) So so that's, you know, but your heart rate, that brings up a good point. Your, your heart rate should be actually regular. When we, were, when we write on somebody's chart, uh, when we were residents and, and, and we were doing history and physicals, we'd write regular rate and rhythm, meaning the, the rate of the heart was 60 or above, but not over 100. And the rate was even, and, and it wasn't, it, you know, arrhythmias are like bump, 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 bump. Uh, you know, so it's not regular. Right. A normal heart's like, bump, bump. you can predict. Yeah, predictable. It. You know what's going to happen. And even if it go, and even if the uh, heart rate goes up, it's still regular. You know, it it mm-hmm. just doesn't miss any beats. Atrial fib it accelerates smoothly. Right. Yeah. And atrial fib is one is is one condition where it's very fast, but it's also irregular. So you'll get two or three heartbeats really close together, and then nothing. Two or three heartbeats close together, yeah. nothing. One heartbeat, two, and I mean, it's it's why you don't feel good if you have that. Okay. And um, it's it's we've talked about that before, but the slow heart rate's important. Now you can have a slow heart rate also if you have if you have heart failure because your heart is not pumping very well. So even though the electricity in the heart may be may be sending it its message, it may not be responding. Um, if you're really cold, like those people that like fall under the ice and they're in ice water, mm-hmm. the reason they stay alive or can be resuscitated is because their entire system gets so slows cold down. it slows everything down. Their brain doesn't use oxygen. Their heart rate slows down to really slow, like people think they're dead because their pulse is so slow. Their blood pressure drops, so they're not so using. So do they do oxygen. that in surgery? Is I mean, is that a thing they about keeping it super surgery. cold? And yes, they have done that in surgery. And in general, when when we have people in surgery, normal people, not trauma trauma victims, we put bear huggers on them. Those are those are these heat heating blankets, so that they don't get too cold. Okay. But if you have somebody who's had brain damage, and I'm trying, I'm going back in my training now, but who has had brain damage and you want to keep them, you want to let them heal before things start swelling, you can cool them down Mm -hmm. to kind of keep everything quiet Mm -hmm. and get everything together and get ready to do some kind of surgery on them. Yeah. So, so, so cold can do it. Obviously heat, sweating and, and exercise makes your heart rate go up, but 
in general, if you've got a low heart rate, you're, it's not going to go up very much. So pulse rate is a major indicator of mm -hmm. that, and then they do other tests to find out what's going on. Right. And so, so the other test would be blood pressure. So a normal blood pressure uh, is under 140 over 80. But in my book, if you're under 100 on, on, the, on the systolic, the up top number, and if you're under 60 on the bottom number, that's pretty low. That may not be enough pressure to send the blood out of the heart to take care of the rest of your body. So not only do you need a heart that pumps, you need to have your arteries with a, a pressure that holds the, the blood in so that it can go through that, like a, not too stiff a pipe, but a, but a pipe that is that is somewhat stiff. It can dilate a little bit, but it's not going it's not floppy. It's not just it's not just expanding like a balloon because if you think about it, if you push something into to a thin tube, it just expands but nothing goes that way. Mm -hmm. So so you have to have a a tube or an artery with good tension and so that gives you blood pressure. So low blood pressure is not either not enough push from the heart or just floppy arteries. So like as, you, as you get older aneurysm. and you build up plaque in your arteries, mm -hmm. does that increase your risk from low blood pressure? No, it increases your risk for high blood pressure. Okay. Because, because you get... It makes a tighter it stream, makes harder it stream. It too, too stiff. Yeah. So a normal artery will be have good tone, like a good toned muscle. Mm -hmm. But it, if you need blood somewhere, your body tells it to open up a little bit, so it'll dilate. Mm -hmm. But if you have plaque on the inside of it, it won't dilate at all. Right. So, so the pressure goes up because there's no release of the pressure by dilating. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. So, so when we do that, when, when we look at that, we make sure our blood pressure is within this range. And then if it's too low, we look for reasons. Are you dehydrated? So if you don't have enough water in your system, or if you don't have enough blood, so if you had a hemorrhage, then your we say your tank is not full. Okay. It's either not full of blood, or if it's not it's not full of water. You don't have enough fluid in your system. So then we usually give somebody blood or water, whatever they need, mm -hmm. and then their tank is then full, and we can see if their blood pressure is really that low, or if it was just caused by the fact that they didn't have enough of something. So it's almost like a physics project with a pump, and, and I guess we were talking about, um, what did you call it, fluid mechanics? Yeah, fluid mechanics. It's, it, that your heart is part of the, the fluid mechanics of your body, right? and so are your arteries and veins. So we have to look at all of that. There's no way to get around it. We start with the heart, and then we go to the veins, and then we go to the lungs and, and arteries, and so... It's kind of a progression. Some of the tests that we do on people, um, we do um, uh, ultrasounds of their heart to make sure their valves are normal because you can imagine if your heart beats and, and squirts blood out forward, but the valve, the valve should shut. If the valve doesn't shut and it has a leak in it, then the, the fluid comes back into the heart. Right. So if it does that, your blood pressure is going to fall. Beca and you're not going to be pumping forward. You're going to be pumping forward, back, forward, back. And that's not good for anybody. So that's why we fix <coughs> valves, so that it'll shut completely and then let the blood go that way. So we do, so we do stress tests. We put people on, on um, treadmills mm -hmm. and see if their heart can stand exercise and see if they get out of breath. We look at their heart rate and their heart rhythm. We look at their blood pressure and their EKG, which tells us about how the, basically gives us a picture of how the heart's operating. So they're, they have a, a mask on with oxygen going into their mask, a not face? On, not always on a stress test, but that tells us the oxygenization and how much oxygen and calories they're using. Okay. So we do the mask for that. Because that, that, I had a stress test mm -hmm. many years ago, and that's what they did with me mm -hmm. and put me on a, on a treadmill, and it just kept raising or lowering the incline mm -hmm. and the speed to mm -hmm. make my system adjust. And they wanted to monitor how well, fluidly, Were it you in adjusted. a study? Um, I don't remember why that happened. Because I was, I've had a bunch of them, and they've never put anything over my face. Huh. So I, I would say that was probably, they were gathering information. Well, they were, but... But I, I, not just for you. Because <laughs> they usually don't <laughs> no. put oxygen or a, a, 
uh, a mask on somebody. But they also have a stress echo where you do the stress test, no mask, and then they have you stop and then they look at your heart with an, uh, with an echo machine, which is just an ultrasound, to see what's happening with the muscle and, mm -hmm. and with the, um, the uh, valves. So they want to look at your heart as well as see what you can do with uh, exercise. So that's another test. Um, but the, the test for arrhythmias or slow heartbeat, that's usually seen on EKG mm -hmm. or you have to go to a um, cardiac physiologist who's a specialized, cardi cardiologists are specialized, and then you have a specialized, specialized cardiologist who is the cardiac physiologist, and he, th they can actually map where the electrical system's uh, going wrong in your heart. So they're like special electrician cardiologists. Right, right. So that's all they do. So, so there's one other thing we want to make sure we cover today. We mm -hmm. introduced it at the beginning. The FDA had forbidden, uh, they, they, by, by changing the definition of the word, they had forbidden the compounding pharmacies from being able to make HCG because they, instead of calling it a drug, they called it a biologic. And they, if they call it a biologic, then by law, compounding farmers can't make it. Uh, pharmacies can't make it. So physicians who were using HCG along with testosterone to regulate uh, testicular atrophy and to keep enough uh, of what you need to make you be able to do what you want <laughs> were at a loss. What are we going to do now? And they, they've discovered uh, or they've begun to use a new drug that is available now for the same thing they used to use HCG for, and that is called gonad orlin. Mm -hmm. And different compounding pharmacies can make it. And if you suffer from testicular atrophy or if you have low testosterone and need to have your hormones adjusted properly, you'll want your doctor to evaluate whether or not this would be something that you should consider. So it's not something you do on your own. You have to have a physician. You need to have these conversations with your doctors about your conditions. Be an informed consumer. So bring up the topic. And your ask. compounding pharmacy will make this for you too. Yes. And it is actually a testicular stimulant, and it, it, it looks like or mimics the hormones from your pituitary when you were young that stimulated the growth and function of your testicles, okay. just like HCG did. But this is a different formula, and that it can be made by compounding pharmacies. So now we have something we can use for young men or for men who have had testicular atrophy because their testicles aren't doing much because they're on testosterone. So if, if that's the case, at least now there's hope that we've been able to find something else to give these men. Some men who are so concerned about testicular atrophy have actually resorted to having uh, fake testicles put in mm -hmm. uh, just because they, they want to look normal. And they're worried that if they don't, and I mean, it doesn't really affect your function no. because the mm -hmm. testosterone does that. Mm -hmm. But they want to look like... It's like a boob job. Yeah, very much so. And you, only, and you can get that. Only, it's not just right out there for everybody to see. It's kind of, it's really <laughs> it's for a your little more, more discreet. intimate yeah. friends. Yeah. Or if you go to, uh, um, if, if you partake in uh, naked vacations or something. Okay, so <laughs> be an informed consumer. Talk to your doctor about those issues. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.